The first warning sign is that you're using Notion as a non-connected to-do list, like Apple Notes or even a piece of paper, then of course you're not going to see any progress. A to-do list is level one of productivity. Level two is a project management system. So I'm going to show you how in here we can build a to-do list that talks to a project database. So I'm going to click on table view here, new table, and this is just going to be my task list. So I'll type that here. And this can be something like do research. Then underneath here, we're going to have a, another database. So forward slash data and click on table view. And we are going to click on new table. And these two are now going to talk to each other. So I'll call this project list. And then here, I'm going to delete tags like that. Click on plus. And to connect the task list to the project list, I'm going to scroll down and click on relation. And now it's going to ask us which one do you want it to relate to? So I'll type here project list and click on this one here. It will ask a few questions. I'll say no limit. You can do show on project list if you want and you can click on add relation. So now you can see here we have project list. So if I have report, for example, and then I'll delete these two blank ones. If I click here now on project list next to do research, you can see report shows up. I click on that. Now this is useful to know, but it doesn't make my to-do list any shorter. See, first we need to create a personal project system. You see, the average person spends around 12 hours a week in email and 12 hours per week again in meetings. That's 24 hours per week that we could easily cut. This is because you don't have a shared project management system. So that's what we're going to do in here. Now I'll show you a mistake. What most people would do is go into this report page, for example, and put in all of the information here, my tasks from my task list and brought them in here and brought in a bunch of other of my data. Then what happens is if I share this, people are going to have access to all of my data. That's why it's better to have with shared projects, a separate page that you are comfortable sharing. And that separate page will also have separate databases. So I'll call this shared projects, for example. And in here, we can do forward slash database, click on new table. And in here, we can do shared projects. So we'll have presentation. We can create the shared project here. So this can include stuff like tasks, details about the project, the brief of the project, and so forth. We'll put all of this in here. And once we have all of that information, then we'll click on share at the top here. And we will share this with the relevant people. We'll give them access to write in any tasks. They can write in any details about the projects. They can add to the brief and all of that other stuff. This just means that we don't have to go back and forth and email the whole day. And they have everything they need in that one page. And then if you have another project here, you just click on project B, type out whatever you want here and click on share. You'll now spend your time in these pages instead of spending your time in meetings and emails. So then how many meetings do I have today? 93. All right, so we'll save like 24 hours per week. That's not bad, but it's difficult to organize my entire life across work, personal side hustles and so forth. Well, this warning sign has to do with the project management. See, the issue is you're still using Google Calendar or Apple Calendar. Again, bring as much as you can into one system. There's just less stuff then that you have to check every single day. So here we have the task list and we have the project list. Now what we're going to want to do is see this task list as a calendar. So we're going to do forward slash calendar and click on calendar view here. Now this time we are not clicking on new calendar. We want to show the task list here. So you can see it comes up in my recents here, task list on the page called warning signs. So I'll click on that and now it's showing up here. I can also click on these three dots here and do full width. So here I have my task list of do research, but it's not showing up anywhere in here. But as you can see, automatically another column got added. This is the date column. So the reason the date column is now showing up is because for a calendar to work, and bear in mind, this task list is the same task list database as this. For a calendar to work, you need a date. So now if I click on date here and just do today's date, and then scroll down, look at that, we can see do research here. Now I have two more things I want to do to this task list slash calendar. I want to click on plus here, scroll down and click on checkbox. I'm just going to do a space for that. So now we have a checkbox system, move that to the side here. And now I'll scroll down and click on these three dots here on the calendar. So these three dots here, and I'll click on properties. And what I want to say is I want to see without clicking on do research, I want to see the checkbox. So now I can see the checkbox and I want to see the relevant project and I can see its report. Now I don't like that this 
comes before this. So what I can do is use these six dots here and drag that above. And now I can see do research, report, and then the checkbox. So now I have my calendar on my one page and I can tick this in. Now, when I scroll up here and I see task list, I don't want to see all the stuff that I've done. That's just going to be annoying. So what I can do is click on this filter here and click on add advanced filter. So I'll add a rule and the rule is where the checkbox is and I want it to be unchecked. So now I'm only seeing unchecked tasks in here. So if I write task one, task two, you can see they're showing up here. But if I tick in task one, it gets removed from here. And I can schedule it in a few ways. I can drag this in like that. Or let's say I remove this date here. What I can do is just click here on the date and say the day that I want. And once it's in my calendar, I can drag these wherever I want to make it work for my week. This allows me to plan my week out. But that's about scheduling. I want to know how much time have I actually spent on these tasks. That warning sign was that you have your calendar as a separate place to go and check. So you have to check your to-do list and then go check your calendar instead of having everything in the one page. So now we want to track our time. There's a few ways of doing this, but I'll show you the easiest one for today. I have a separate video all about time tracking linked in the description. If you click on the plus here and then click on number, here we can now say time spent. Now this is manually doing it. So let's say I finished task two and I say it took me 20 minutes and then click on tick. That has now tracked that I spent 20 minutes on task two. But I want to be able to see all of the time that I spent on these tasks. So what we'll do here is right click on table and let's say uncompleted. And then we're going to duplicate this. So I'll duplicate and say complete and I'll change the emoji. So now I want to change the filter from where it is unchecked to where it is checked because I only want to see the completed tasks. And now I can see time spent 20 minutes. And if you hover down here, you can see that these now come up. And if I click on the calculate, I can actually say, how do I want all of this to be calculated? So I want to see this as more options, sum. Sum meaning it just adds it up. So let's add this to report as well. And then let's create a new one here, project B, just for example, click on project B that's been created. So now what I wanna see under this tab is these tasks and the time actually broken down by the project. So to do that, we are going to use this thing called groups. So I'll click on the three dots here and click on group. Now this group will only affect this tab. This will not affect this tab or down here. So when you are adding groups and filters and sorting, it only affects this here. I also have a separate video on filters, sort and group. So here I can now say I want to sort this tab here, all of these, I want to sort them by the project. So now you can see project B under this toggle here. In total, I've spent 30 minutes. And report here, in total, I've spent 20 minutes and 40 minutes, which is 60 minutes. Once again, I'm not using a separate system. I am doing my time tracking in here in my task list, which is also on the same page as my calendar. So I've got my tasks, my projects, and my calendar, but what about random notes? Well, a big warning sign should light up your room if you have a single sticky note on your desk. Because in Notion, you can search your entire Notion account just by doing Command K. And now in here, I can search every single piece of text on my entire Notion account. Plus, I can use filters up here. So if I click on show filters, I can actually use sorting. I can say, hey, I only want to search by the title. If it's been created by a specific person, if it's in a specific page. So let's say on my warning signs page, I have a ton of text. I could say, hey, I only want to search stuff in the warning signs page and I can even search by date. So if you're capturing all your notes in here, all of your resources, all of your journaling and everything in the one place, you can search this brain. Speaking of, if you want an amazing second brain, then check out Headquarters. It has over 1,400 users and a five-star rating. It is my ultimate productivity template that utilizes the 10 best productivity techniques built into the template. Check it out here and thank you so much for watching.